Get to give much of an announcement except for, hey, dudes, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you look at the uh, Guaranteed Shredded uh, ebook I sent you the other yeah. day? Yeah, I've got a copy of it, but I've been so swamped the last oh, yeah, day okay. I haven't had a chance to read through it. Yeah, so no I am I am definitely going to read it because I know that you know your shit and I know how ripped you are. Um, welcome, everybody. I want to introduce you to uh, my good friend, Jay Campbell. Uh, I've had him on the show before. We've talked about uh, testosterone optimization and TRT and the like in the past. Uh, today's broadcast is going to be specifically about getting a little more ripped. Um, Jay, Welcome. What's up, Richard? How you doing, brother? Good to have. Good to be here. Appreciate the opportunity, as always. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have you. I love talking about this shit because you know self care is an important thing for uh, guys. And you know, it's funny because I just came back from Florida, and it, you know, not that Canada is much better, but there's a lot of people that are walking around in bodies that just, I mean, they can't be comfortable, they can't be healthy, their joints must hurt. Um, it's just bonkers. Like you, you live in California, so they're a little more, you know, left leaning and more tuned into the optics <laughs> of, of looks there. Um, you know, there's more beautiful people in California. Like there's no doubt about that than, than there is probably in Florida, but it's just bonkers to me how people are, are just resign themselves to living in a state like that. It's crazy, bro. Um, but just to let you know, California is not immune anymore. I mean, I'd like to think that it was, um, but it's not, it's, uh, it's the same. I mean, you know, you go, you know, I'm in West Covina, so I'm probably like 14 miles down East of downtown Los Angeles, which is about 27 and a half miles of, from the water East. But I mean, you go around me in the suburbs and dude, it's the same thing. You know, everybody's obese. People don't give a shit about the way they look. They have, you know, most of them have, as you said, body dysmorphia or muscle dysmorphia. Because if you look like that and you wake up every day, and you take a shower and you don't do something about it. That's like a form of mental illness, man, because we both know that in society, people judge you based on your appearance, right? I mean, you can't get around 100%. that. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's death by a thousand paper cuts, right? <laughs> Except for this time, it's got to do with like probably death by a thousand happy meals, you know, sort of thing or something it's that's tied crazy. into that. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, so uh, today's topic, we're going to be talking about, you know, how to get shredded, how to get ripped. Uh, you can see in the backdrop behind Jay, um, he's a pretty solid dude. Like, you're what? You're 47, 48. I mean, you're a couple years older than me, right? Yeah, I'll be 48, uh, 23 days from today. Yeah. Um, and can you, like, kind of give him, like, the minute elevator pitch, like your Batman origin story, how you got into TOT, the optimization of the male body and that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Uh, 29 years old, uh, was a former competitive and professional basketball player at a minor cup of coffee overseas and got kicked in the testicles playing basketball um, and didn't know what happened. Two and a half months later, I was very lucky that I, I, my PPO doctor recommended me to a Harvard educated endocrinologist. He ran some tests on me. He's like, dude, you got low testosterone. It's probably from getting kicked in the nuts. Um, subsequently, the next 15 years, I became like a total nerd learning about uh, testosterone optimization, working with numerous doctors. I wrote my first book on testosterone optimization therapy in 2015, which is called the TRT manual back here. Um, and then subsequently I've become kind of like a subject matter expert on it. I wrote my last book, uh, which was in February of 2018 on, um, it's called the TOT Bible, which is now the number one selling book of all time on the subject. And um, I'm just very blessed and fortunate, Richard, to have friends like you and also doctors um, you know, who are in my network that I work with and stuff like that are kind of at the tip of the spear who really understand how to optimize people's hormones. And, you know, when you're optimizing people's hormones, as you were already talking about, you know, it's kind of the gamut. It's the whole multi-phase um, angular approach of life. You know, you're obviously lean, you're functionally strong, you feel good about yourself, you have a good mindset, and then obviously it interrelates into your, hopefully your career and everything else you do as a parent, as a father and all those other things. So when you're optimized slash balanced, you know, it leads to the, all these other things that you and I are talking about. Awesome. And uh, just as you were doing that, I was kind of doing some housekeeping. Um, guys, if you're in my men's community, I'm, po I'm, I'm posting the join link if you want to ask questions directly of Jay. It's a lot easier format if you just click and kind of join in and ask the questions as we're going through. So if you're watching there, uh, also the, sorry, the testosterone optimization Bible that you've already written is linked on the files tab of the men's community on the Facebook page. Um, if you're watching this outside of the community, uh, consider joining. The link is pinned in every video. Uh, 25 bucks a month membership. You get access to all kinds of awesome stuff and upgrades. That's a hell of a deal, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll talk about that later anyway. Um, so let's get into the public stuff. So you gave me a copy of this new book that you've put out. Like, what is the general premise? Because I've slowly but surely been leaning more into trying to get uh, 
you know, try to lean out more to have my clothes fit me better. Because when you go on uh, TRT and you eat a lot, like, like I eat a lot of calories every day and I go to the gym, like I put on about 10 pounds. Right. And since I've put on the 10 pounds, um, you know, I probably put at least half an inch, an inch on me just about everywhere on my body, including my waist. And I've still got a nice V taper, but I'd like to kind of lean out more in the waist area. Like I got more of a four pack instead of the six pack that I used to sure. have. So, um, what, what's the premise of the book? If you can kind of like walk us through it and why it's an important read for guys these days. Yeah, sure. So, um, I think I'll, you know, from a bigger picture standpoint to, to give this story of like that whole evolution, I wrote a book in 2017, it's called the metabolic blowtorch diet. It's a book on essentially how to it's maintain super low body fat, 365 days a year. It's essentially a way to optimize, um, intermittent fasting. So I'm a big student proponent of intermittent fasting. Um, I was using intermittent fasting, like back in 2007, 2008, when Martin Burkhans first wrote his book, lean gains, he didn't actually write the book until recently, but his uh, protocol was out online. Was a big adherent and follower of his, but as I, you know, worked with that and learned on my own, I tweaked it. I made my own stuff. Um, various private clients of mine and people that were in my inner circle had my version of it, and a lot of guys just finally hit me up in like 2015 and were like, "Dude, your diet is insane. Why don't you mass promote it or put it out to the public?" And I was just kind of like, "Ah, eh. you know, I'm not one of those guys that want to sell a diet book." But eventually with all, enough prodding and enough people, I, I did work on it and I tweaked it. And I swear in about a month, I wrote the entire book in 2017 and we published it in October of 2017. And subsequently, you know, it's been a rousing success. The, the, the reason it's successful is because any person, male or female, can apply the principles of the diet starting tomorrow you don't really have to buy a lot of, you know, adjuncts or ancillary drugs or medications or anything because it's a diet that essentially works this way. You one day you do not eat, okay? And go, and and the the goal is to if you're a woman go at least 16 hours plus without eating. If you're a man, it's 20, you know, really 19 to 22 hours without eating before you break your fast. And then the next day you train with weights and you also eat to obviously replace muscle glycogen stores that are now have been depleted from the day before when you were fasting. So it's, if you really want to break it down, um, you know, from a theory of fasting, it's what would be called an alternate fasting approach. So it's every other day. Now you can obviously tweak the diet to your individual life. If you're a guy that trains, I don't recommend by the way, training more than four days a week. If you're going to fast for the primary goal of fat loss, if you're just doing it for maintenance, and you're already where you need to be, then absolutely you can train with weights five days a week and fast two. Um, but for pure fat loss standpoints, I recommend you fast four days and you train three days. But on your uh, training days- Question for you. Why does it have to be 20 hours? Is that like when you get into ketosis? So it's a great question. Um, and it's more of a question around this. It's kind of a yes, but actually there's two reasons, but that, that that's, that's really uh, reason three. But the two reasons why you want to go that long is for- the primary reason is that at 18, all the research shows that at 18 to 20 is when you start to have catecholamines rushing through your body. Now, catecholamines are fight or flight hormones. So you've got like epinephrine, norepinephrine, and you know the other two that I that escape me right now. But those fight or flight hormones actually attack stubborn body fat stores. So if you're a dude and you have love handles or a woman and you've got fat in your hips or your butt or whatever the epinephrine and all again, these catecholamines, they attack those store, those stubborn body fat stores, which are very difficult, as you guys know, from dieting and exercise to lose because you don't get a lot of blood flow to those areas. So why this diet is so awesome is that if you can fast for a long time and become very good at it and extend your fast even to 30 plus hours before you eat again, you will lose your stubborn body fat very, very quickly. Um, okay. So you get to like 18, 20 hours. So let's say I have dinner today at like six o'clock, right? Yep. Um, then we move 12 hours. That's uh, 6 a.m. Another yep. six hours. We're getting to 18. So that's like, you know, noon. Yep. So you're saying by like two to three o'clock the next day would be when you have your next meal? Yeah. Or do you wait longer than the 20 hours? Well, that's a good question. So it really just depends on how much fat loss you have. Okay. If you, or you, or you, you want. So if you're a fat dude, you know, you're, Technically, what is I think uh, considered now be obese is 29% or higher body fat. So if you're 29 to 31%, and that's also there's a BMI that correlates it. But if you're that level, then I tell people 
And that's where this diet came in, which is like the advanced, you know, 10x, <laughs> the Grant Cardone version of the metabolic blowtorch diet. I say extend your fast the whole day. Mm-hmm. So if you're a fat dude and you come to me and you say, dude, I want to lose my body fat as fast as humanly possible, but also do it in a healthy way. Then that's what I tell people to do. I say, look, OK, you're not going to eat every other day. So on your days that you eat, you obviously have to replenish um, calories, protein, obviously macro and micronutrients relative to your training intensity, right? So if you are a fat dude, but you're strong and muscular, mm-hmm. you were one time a big muscular guy, mm-hmm. you're going to have to eat a pretty good amount on your eating days to, you know, basically replenish so that you don't lose, you know, any muscle. I do want to answer this though for you, Richard, because a lot of people believe erroneously that you will lose muscle when you fast. I actually, yeah, that's what I've heard. Like I've heard your body will actually consume muscle before yeah, fat it's, it's, as an energy source. So it's, it's, it's complete falsehood. Um, the, all of the research that's out there, and there's actually some really amazing research. And I have three of the studies in the metabolic blowtorch diet. Um, and I've, anybody that wants to reach out to me and fact check me on Google, I have them saved. I'll send them to you, no problem. Um, but bottom line is, there's, they went 76 hours without food. And this is, by the way, a very highly trained uh, track and field endurance athlete who had a body fat level scandex of 5.3 percent so 76 hours before there started to be muscle protein degradation so when you know that and remember that's also a person that you're rarely likely ever going to be that lean you know i mean you got to get down to five percent body fat and then you know that at 76 hours without food you have the potential to start burning muscle protein for energy so if you go two days 60 hours and you're a fat dude you're not going to be burning any muscle. Now, again, when I say that, you obviously on your days when you break your fast and when you do eat, you got to replenish your body. You got to get enough protein. You got to get enough carbohydrates, and hopefully, you get enough cl- you know clean essential fatty acids. Hmm. Okay. Um, so I'll use myself as an example. You know, it's funny because I'm because I'm kind of scanning the comments as we're talking here, and, and people are really irritated that you're swaying back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing up. No, tell them I'm standing up. So I have a stand up desk and a giant IMAX. So I kind of stand up. No, no, I think it's hilarious because so like you're a high energy dude, right? Energy. It's like you're getting your cardio in, right? <laughs> oh man, the comments cracked me up. Um, all right, so so okay, so here's my thing. Um, when I was down in Florida, I'm talking to Elliot Hulse. I think you know who Elliot is, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so you know we're lining the guy up for a. Uh, 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 you know, convention this spring, you know, for fathers and we're shooting the shit a, a, a few times. He's talking a lot about fasting, right? Because um, when he was a strong man, he, he, you know, he's telling me he was weighing in at like 260 and he was standing in front of me at 188 and he's fucking ripped. Like, you know, there was like six of us one night. We're just planning some shit out. We're sitting in the big hot tub, you know, um, you know, at the hotel and he's coming out and like, he's got like fucking abs. Like I've never seen this guy look this ripped before. And I'm asking him like, how did you get there sort of thing? And he's like, intermittent fast is like, you know, it's Wednesday and I haven't eaten since Monday sort of thing. And I'm like, I'm a little bit new to this. I know that it, you know, that it's got some research that, that backs it up. Um, and there's a lot of people I've heard out there that do it. Like there's a guy, uh, here in Toronto, Kino body, Greg O'Gallier. He's always pushing that, uh, notion. So I gave it a try for a couple of days. And before I left, I stood like, I stay, stand on the scale every single day. And I usually weigh in between two Oh, like two Oh seven and maybe two Oh nine two ten, Right. You know, straight out of the shower. Um, when I came back after it was probably about two and a half, maybe three days of some fasting, like eating dinner only, um, I stood on the scale at uh, 202 pounds, right? So caloric restriction was in place. All I did in the morning was have coffee. Like, right. does it happen that fast? Absolutely. I'm telling you, dude, this is what people don't understand is that when a person is conditioned like you are, you're well muscled, you've been training for a long time, you understand how to contract muscle fibers, you know how to train. I mean, Richard, you know, I don't want to get into a long conversation about this, but I just, in my group, we just had this very long you know, thread about training intensity. The average person, as you know, Richard, doesn't have to train. They, they go to the gym and they work out, right? Like you have to train, you have to learn to build muscle. But, you know, for someone like you with your physique, someone like me, anybody who has well, you know, well muscled, it's incredible how fast the body will utilize, you know, the very, very low um, blood pumped areas of stubborn body fat. You know, you're, if we went into the specificity, it would be like your A and B2 receptors, which are, again, the stuff that lines like right here, 
the back of your upper butt. You know, some guys even have fat in their upper back, depending on mm. your, um, you know, your, your phenotype. But um, it's, dude, I'm telling you, if you follow my diet for four weeks, you will literally be like, are you serious, dude? I cannot believe this happened. And you won't lose any muscle. You'll definitely, your weight will fluctuate because again, mm. when you fast and you do get into ketosis and there's, you know, this, this diet, which we'll get to, um, yeah, I got a link for that. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it utilizes all of those things. Like I call it metabolic flexibility, which I stole from um, Benjamin Brown, who's the nutritionist um, or was the nutritionist for the Golden State Warriors, a good friend of mine. Metabolic flexibility is essentially allowing your diet, how you eat to manage and harness all the different energy systems that the human body uses, right? So you got people that are like, oh, they're, I'm a keto bro, or you've got, if it fits your macros bros, or you got low carb bros, or you got fasting bros, I'm a fasting bro. Mm -hmm. um, so that diet actually harnesses all of those lifestyles into one diet. So you do get into ketosis. You do fast. Does it, does it does it work better for the different body types? Like you got the mesomorphs and the ectomorphs? Yeah, it works equally well for everyone. Fat people, it works the best for. because Obviously, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, the truth though is fat people, what most people don't understand about, um, you know, adiposity is that fat people have the least blood flow. So, you know, these guys are laughing at me right now because I move around and stuff, but you know, I already put a note in the group. I said like, you know, if you understand hermetics, like I have like a, a really high rate of spin. That's why like I'm extremely energetic and I move around and stuff a lot, but people who are fat, they don't have that. And so it's like a genetic you know, uh, difficulty to overcome. So they're never burning calories because they're not very energetic. So they have to work much harder, especially in the gym and then also to monitor and restrict their calories. So it's a lot harder for those type of people. And it is all genetics. Like when you have a high rate of spin, you've got the muscle fiber typing that allows that too. Let me ask um, you this question. Um, sure. you know, if women want to lose like fat, but they don't want to lose their boobs and butt does, does, um, does intermittent fasting, affect that or does it target fat like you know like around the waist area still so a woman who that's a good question too a woman who is fat in specific areas like boobs like glutes um if they get if again and, and obviously i can't speak i'm talking general purposes everybody's different biochemically unique but a woman who's like that typical hourglass you know jessica rabbit shape where she has like a thick butt yeah and, yeah <laughs> right, is booksum if she is like she looks good on the outside, but that usually that type is actually holding a lot of body fat. Those people mm -hmm. for sure, they're going to lose fat in their boobs and in their glutes for sure. If they get right. lean, if they get really lean. Okay. So intermittent yeah, fasting will all, do all, that. All different. Yeah. It's all okay. based on body type and stuff. Okay. Do you need P strips to make sure that you're in ketosis? No, no. I mean, you could, if you really wanted to go, I mean, you're not. So the goal of my, on my type of diets is not to be in ketosis for very long. Now, with that said, I sometimes, not for body fat dropping purposes, but for the spiritual component, I will do 60 hour fasts. And that's like all discussed in this book. Um, which right. is like, you know, a perfect example. You already kind of said it. So if you stopped eating tonight at six o'clock and then you broke your fast at six o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning, so you didn't eat Saturday, you didn't eat Sunday, that would be a 60 hour fast. Got it. Okay. And I'll post the link for the guaranteed shredded book. Um, if you're in my men's community, that book is on the file tab. It's free. You don't, you don't have to worry about it, but there's a link there. If you guys want to grab a copy, if you're publicly watching this, um, like I was talking to Elliot about this sort of stuff and he was also going on about the P strips. Um, I think I read somewhere it was Ben Greenfield that was talking about buying ketones or maybe it was Joe Rogan. Are you familiar with that? Where you actually, yeah, adjust absolutely. Them? yeah. So, so you can actually, in fact, here, I got it right here. You can actually buy what are called um, ketone. Um, they're basically, um, what is it? The cytobutyrate. It's essentially ketone. So it's calcium hydroxy, hydroxybutyrate, sodium hyd hydroxybutyrate. I can't pronounce the damn words. And then potassium and magnesium are the same thing. So these are essentially ketones that one can uh, supplement with for fuel. Now they do have um, they do have uh, a caloric energy, um, you know, demand. So it's like, for example, like one scoop of this is 80 total calories. So if you're a person that's just in a pure ketosis diet, it's okay to use this on a regular basis. But if you're on like using my diet or you're doing a fasting diet, the only time you would really want to do this is if you are going, you know, 60 hours, 60 plus hours, and you're like just dead. Let's say, for example, you want to do a second cardio session on Sunday. You're now 48 hours or 50 hours plus, 
and you're just like on fumes. If you wanted to take a scoop of this and put it in water, it would technically, not technically, theoretically and really, it would give you energy, but you would also essentially break your fast because remember there's 80 calories from fat in this. So I've heard from um, a few different sources that when you intermittent fast, and I think there's some studies that have been done on this as well, and it, and it also ties into Evo psychology where you know, for hundreds of thousands of years, we've been nomadic hunter gatherers kind of moving around and you'd get up in the morning and you wouldn't always have access to, um, you know, proteins, fats, and, uh, you know, plant matter sort of thing. So you'd have to go out and hunt and gather and you'd have your supply sort of thing, maybe for another day or so. So there was, there was probably consistent periods of time throughout history where we were forced to fast just because there was no available calories. Right. So it seems to make sense that, um, you know, with an unlimited supply of calories that we can get at any given time. Like it's hard for me working from home. Like I noticed, you know, when I came back and I wanted to keep taking some time off from eating and yeah. not eating breakfast, not eating lunch, I got a kitchen pantry full of food right. that I like. And it's not shitty food, right? Like I've got, you know, like pumpkin seeds that I snack on, yeah. cashews, Brazil nuts, you know, like just random nuts and things like that throughout the day. And for me to like walk past there to go get like a coffee or a, or a glass of water, and not eat when you've got some hunger pains. So that's a question for you. Like, how do you deal with the hunger pain part? So, um, so it's a good question. So you won't have, okay, it, 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 this is a, I'll make it very lay and I'm not, not that you wouldn't be able to understand it, but for the public. Um, so what happens when you fast, like, especially if you've never fasted before in your life, you do have to just like in ketosis diets or ketotic diets, you have to adapt. So what I call it is, you know, and all the people that are in the fasting community call it fast adapted. Fast adapted and fat adapted are almost synonymous, but when your body becomes fast adapted, for a couple of things happen. First, your microbiota, which is your brain of your gut, okay, becomes cleansed to the point um, that you don't have those hunger pangs. Because so those hunger pangs come from your microbiota that is essentially not infected, but you know always has different. Um, you know, pathogens and food bacteriums and stuff like that that are always laying in there. When you become a regular faster, and I've now been a regular faster, like hardcore for three years. I, I, I'm not joking when I tell people this because a lot of people don't believe this. I can go seven days without eating and not even have a thought process about eating because it's mostly mental for me too. And it's obviously I'm very deep into the spiritual. But once you get to a level where your body is fast adapted, you're not going to have hunger pangs at all. Mm. Not at all. But mm. um, to, to your question, most people I find become un, um, they, the hunger pangs go away between five and nine days. And, and, and obviously a supplement slash medication that you can use that can really improve the process is metformin. And, you know, for all the guys that come at me and say, well, what about, um, whatever the, the, I always forget what the other supplements called. That's the equal, the natural supplement that's equal to metformin. Kratom. Um, well, I can't think of what it's called right now, but, What's um, it called Kratom or Kratom or something? No, it's not Kratom. It's, it's the other one. There's a, there's a, there's a, a natural, somebody will announce it. It's a natural form of uh, metformin. You can use that too. Mm. And why is metformin important? Like, where do you get that and what is it? So metformin is the most studied drug in the history of the world. It's used for diabetic patients, type two, and even type one, but mostly for type two. And what it does, um, is it suppresses blood sugar and it inhibits blood sugar in the liver cleans it out. So essentially, you know, it, it improves your metabolism of sugar, of blood glucose. So for diabetics who treat, who treat their bodies like absolute dog shit and eat all the time, they, the doctors prescribe it and say, Oh, take this when you're eating your crappy diet and it'll quote unquote blunt your blood sugar, um, you know, from going crazy and having your insulin spike. But for people like us who are using it for life extension purposes, because it does a lot of other things, Richard, other than suppress your blood sugar. But for people like us, it's going to enhance fat loss. It's going to cleanse the microbiota big majorly, and it's also going to suppress your appetite. So, for example, when you are regularly using metformin, so for example, I take one gram AM and I take one gram PM, um, it massively regulates um, my blood sugar. So I don't have insulin spikes ever. Like I, you know, I, I mean, what people don't understand is like, I have a massive appetite. I mean, I'm not that big of a dude. I'm, I mean, I'm six, one and a half and I'm about right now I'm pretty super lean. I'm about two thirteen, two twelve and a half. and a half, but, um, I can eat a lot. Like I can eat most people under the table and I've always been able to do that. But when I'm using my metformin, I could literally go and eat three apple pies and not have 
um, you know, an insulin spike because I've been on metformin for like 16 years. So you can get metformin, by the way, from a doctor prescribing it. It's pretty simple if the doctor is intelligent. I mean, obviously we know that most doctors are like, oh, you're not diabetic. You don't need that. For a doctor who's in the optimization realm and understands the life extension purposes, they'll write you a script. But if you can't find a doctor to do it, various offshore pharmacies do sell it. The one place that I recommend, which is the cheapest, like in bulk, is in-house pharmacy.vu so victor underwear right and that shit down right now yeah it's an amazing place in-house pharmacy dot vu dot v u yeah you can buy 500 tabs at like 850 <laughs> milligrams per tablet extended release for like 59 bucks i think or 60 bucks okay um what else should we know so i already posted the uh link in the chat for you guys it's also pinned in the description below for uh, the guaranteed shredded book. What other what other nuggets can you give these guys? I got about twenty minutes before I got to hop off. I'm doing a Red Man Group broadcast and a little bit after this. So, what else do these guys need to know about it? Um, you know, if they want to get into this sort of intermittent fasting, getting ripped. You know, if they don't want to grab the books just yet, yeah. sell them on uh, it. Yeah, no, no. Um, I mean, it's you know, it's anybody can use it. it. Doesn't matter your fitness level or your physique or how fat you are or how low body fat you are. I mean, you can just do it right away. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, it's just a plan. Um, you know, I give away my book, obviously the Metabolic Blood Torch Diet, now for free too. If you want to email me, it's contact at trtrevolution.com. I'll give you the PDF, no problem. Um, and then. Um, you know, after that, you know, it, it just, you know, Google uh, metabolic blowtorch diet, Jay Campbell, there's a million articles online, they're all free, you know, you can learn much more about the program. Um, it's, you know, to me, it's a, it's a program that should be based on a lifestyle of, okay, these are my days I'm going to fast based on my, you know, work life balance and schedule. And these are the days I'm going to train. So for me, just so people know, yeah. again, I'm very open about this. I train Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Good. Okay. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yep. And then I fast on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So a lot of my weekends, I fast the whole time. Okay. So you're eating on days that you're training. Exactly. Okay. And when you're fasting, you're doing what, like a 20 hour fast, you eat dinner and then you don't eat dinner until the next day. Kind of. No, the next day I eat like crazy cause I'm training, but yeah, I mean, essentially like, so if my, if like, for example, tonight, well, no, let's use a Tuesday night cause, uh, or a Monday night. So at Monday night, my last meal will probably be like eight 30 or last, last feeding will be at eight 30 and then I won't eat until you know 7 30 6 45 something like that the next night and a lot of times if i don't feel like i need to eat or i'm really busy creating content or whatever i just don't eat i won't and, eat Wednesday and morning. what about um things like coffee or tea or like fluids that you drink do they break the fast like does coffee break the fast no so it can if you have any kind of energy or fat you know, if you put butter, like like a bulletproof coffee or MCT oil, that would break your fast. But if you just drank black coffee or like I drink, you know, water with caffeine in it, you know, I put like I get these Walmart um, caffeine things or whatever they are, the great energy. I mean, they're great value energy, you know, and, and those will have like electrolytes um, and caffeine, but there's no calories. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just put that in water and I'll drink that. But coffee's great. You know, tea's good too, like green tea with nothing in it. So as long so as you're not putting any basically anything with zero calories, like if you're drinking Coca-Cola, that's obviously going to break your fast. That's just yeah. Shit. I mean, but that's actually a good question because you know a lot of people will come at me and they'll be like, "Well, what about this? You know, GNC or you know some supplement store drink that has two calories and it has no sugar, um, and it's a replacement sugar, you know, that produ produces the two calories." And I always say like this: I'm like, if you're lean enough, you can get away with it. Because even if it does break your fast, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're, you know, a fat person and you're really trying to make the diet work, I would try to avoid anything with any caloric value until you get to that point where you're like, okay, I feel good. You know, I'm, I'm at a level I feel good about. Got it. Um, just a quick break to welcome a uh, new member to the channel, Unpussified. <laughs> nice handle. I love that. Okay. Um, there's a couple of guys on uh, Brad and AM. So if you guys have questions, you can either post them in the group chat or just unmute yourself. You can you can join in and ask. You know, before we hop off in 15 minutes, um, uh, for guys that are on TRT, because you know you're close to my age. I, I've been on it for about a year now. Um, what's <laughs> Alanis Morissette? <laughs> oh boy, Alanis Morissette. She's smoking crack. Isn't that ironic? Well, thanks for the super chat, Al Alanis. Appreciate it. <laughs> I love awesome. these guys. Um, so what about the guys out there that are on TRT? Like, does anything change? Do you, 
you get an edge, you get an advantage? Is there a problem with it? Like, no, what do we need to know for guys in that area? Definitely an advantage, and that's actually in the uh, guaranteed shredded part. Um, when you're hormonally optimized, your body, obviously, testosterone is lipolytic, which means it increases fat burning, increases cellular uh, respiration and, and uh, basic metabolic rate. So you do get an advantage when you are optimized. Testosterone replacement therapy is TRT or what I call TOT, testosterone optimization, optimization therapy. Same yeah. thing. Same thing. Um, but but um, yeah, you are better. You're definitely better when you're hormonally balanced. Plus two, you have better thyroid function when you're hormonally balanced because mm. most doctors that are doing this right are also optimizing the thyroid you know, in, in succession. So usually you get a desiccated thyroid supplement or you should and the, obviously the brands are armor and and uh, and also um nature Thro thyroid and by the way just so everybody knows um i sell this book online for 50 bucks because this is like everything that i do to a t including all my medications and i have links on where you can get all the medications so i i would put this diet and i and again i have some very high level professional people that i can't name who are following this diet and living this diet for a while now and they'll you know, do incredible ringing endorsements for it. But like, it's, it's worth. If well, I'm going to really check it out. Like I got a copy of the book. I gave the copy that you gave me to my men's community. You said I could do that. So it's there. It's linked sure. there. If you guys want to buy it, I'm going to give it a try and I'm going to report back to my community. Awesome. Like I'm confident it's going to work. You know, I pushed myself up to about 210. I'm around the same height as you. Like I'm like, I'm just over six foot two. I'm actually surprised that you said that, you know, that you weigh 213 because that means you weigh more than I do and you're a little bit shorter, but you look a lot more ripped than I do. It's just muscle. It's muscle uh, density, you know, because I remain I su I'm so lean and obviously, you know, I've been fasting for so long. You'll look, yeah, yeah. you know, you you probably will be if I was to guess now that I know your height, you'll probably about you'll be about two six to two oh eight. That's what mm. you want. Yeah. OK, um, yeah. So I'm going to give it a try and see how it goes. Um, as far as diet goes, like, what do you recommend? Like, I usually just eat meats and greens. I tend to stay away from carbs and breads just because they convert to sugar in your body, which is shit. Um, I'm good with dairy. Like, my body processes dairy fine. A little bit gassy, but who cares? It tastes good. Um, you know, but aside from that, like, what's your recommendation for diet when you're on a fasting sort of regime, right? I mean, same thing. The good thing about the metabolic blowtorch diet, though, is it really allows you to build in cheats because you're eating so many carbs on the days that you train to replenish, um, you know, the fasted, um, since you push your blood sugar down so low and you're, you know, you suppress your insulin signal. So, I mean, I tell people this all the time, like today, bro, like I just trained this morning and I trained pretty hard. Um, I'll eat whatever the hell I want today. Now that doesn't mean I go out and eat three cakes, you know, and a bunch of Doritos and Mountain Dew, but you know, I'll eat, you know, relatively unrestrained. So I would, I would say that what you said is the right answer. If you're a fat person, you should be eating meat and greens. Um, you know, my friend Jim Brown always says that meat, meat and veggies will make your dreams come true. I mean, obviously you already know that most people who are lean know that, but bottom line is, is if you're already like you and you don't have a lot of fat to go, you'll be blown away at how much more you can eat on your training days and get away with it without having any kind of fat deposition. Um, versus your normal diet right now where you're much more like, you know, militant and strict as far as like the type of calories you consume. So this this diet allows you kind of to eat more unrestrained um, on your training days than, than you do in your normal life. Got it. And um, Alanis Morissette just revealed the title to her new album. It's going to be called Just Eat Cardboard and Shoot Heroin. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for the super right. chat. <laughs> <laughs> Those crazy Canadian artists, right? Um Jay, opinion on clenbuterol. Cl I'm just looking yeah, so, at some comments uh, here. Good question. So clenbuterol is absolutely really to be avoided. It does work. Clearly, it's a really good fat loss agent. But albuterol is a much safer um, and very similar. It works the same pathways, but you can use it more regularly. Clenbuterol also downregulates um, this, the receptors that it, that it targets. So you can't even use clenbuterol, but the problem with clenbuterol and why I tell people not to use it is there's a lot of data and studies on it that it damages cardiac muscle. So if you truly care about your long life and extending your life and pre preserving your vascular pathways, especially if you're on testosterone, um, you should, what about ephedrine? Do what? What about ephedrine? So ephedrine is also, uh, it's better than clenbuterol, but it also stimulates, um, you know, vascular pathways for select people. Like I can't use ephedrine because it also stimulates uh, the smooth muscle lining in um, the, the, uh, the, ur the, ur the, I can never pronounce that word. Urethra. The urethra. Yeah. So like in the urethra canal, when I use anything that 
um, causes that shrinkage and stimulates that smooth muscle lining, I can't piss, you know, right. like I'm dribbling. So, but not, that does not everybody, that just affects people individually. But if it doesn't bother you, ephedrine's great and it's definitely much safer. Yeah, I knew a guy in my 20s that was using clenbuterol and he, I don't know where he got it from, but I think it was um, like veterinary standard for racehorses. And it said right on the container, um, animals administered with this product are not to be used for slaughter and human consumption. Um, you know, it was like a pump, like they would pump it on the hay and the racehorses would eat it and would open up the pathways and then get more oxygen in. But um, yeah, it's a pretty har harsh product. Like I remember him when he was on it, dude was like fucking shaking like this, like crazy all day long. Yeah. Um, and, and you don't need that. Like, you know, you, so with albuterol, and again, this is all step-by-step -step and guaranteed shredded. Yeah. Um, you use albuterol. You can buy it from a supplement company. Iron Dragon Labs will sell it to you. It's a liquid. You just put it in a drink or you just put, you know, the dropper in your mouth and you swallow it before you train. But it increases um again cellular respiration in stubborn body fat stores so if you cool. use it in combination with caffeine again all described in the book and pre-cardio it's really like a blowtorch to stubborn body fat yeah. and there's no addiction it's not addictive you don't have the down regulation you have that you have with clenbuterol cool um when we were talking offline uh earlier we kind of threw up the idea of doing another broadcast on uh, testosterone optimization you said that there's some new research out and you've learned some new things that might be beneficial um i'd like to do that with you in the future if you're still down sure. for that yeah. okay cool um a lot of new stuff did you did you switch over completely from uh pinning to uh creams on your scrotum Yep. I have transcrotal. I have switched over. It's been six months now. Um, it's definitely, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll share that data right here. It's definitely um, from an improvement. So if you're doing daily or every other day injections, um, the improvement from transcrotal is twofold. Obviously you're not poking holes in yourself. So when you, you know, combine this idea that you're going to be on testosterone optimization for the rest of your life, um, you know, there's value there that you don't have to keep hitting yourself with needles, um, which isn't that big of a deal if you're using the right gauge needle anyway, but you know, it's just also something you don't have to consider yourself. Yeah, the scar tissue is a pain in the ass, exactly. literally. Right. Like I have, I have scar tissue from 18 years of injections now up here that I have to have ART and rubbed out and everything. And again, you can deal with it. It's not that big of a deal. There's six, there's, I know guys in their sixties and seventies have been pinning for 40 years and they're fine. But, um, the one advantage rich that you really see is the sexual function. Because what happens with um, the transcrotal testosterone cream, and by the way, guys in the international community and not so much Canada, but like in Europe, you're screwed because unless you can get like a specific compounding formula to formulate the right cream, it's 200 milligrams per gram in a Versa base. I always get that question. I'm always answering that on YouTube. Most of the stuff that's international in Europe and Asia is a gel. Do not put a gel on your scrotum. You will burn you and you will be like, oh. So you cannot use any of that. And plus all of those um, international gels are garbage. They're like 50 milligrams or hundred milligrams. You gotta have 200 milligrams per gram Versa base um, uh, compounded, compounded cream. Okay. It's not sold over the counter. So just remember that. And if you email me again, I'll, I'll be happy to show you guys what I use, but um, it increases DHT rich. So DHT dihydrotestosterone is the main sex um, you know, a sexual signal from an androgenic standpoint. So you mm -hmm. definitely have heightened sexual function. And what that means, because guys ask me all the time, well, what does that mean, bro? It means that your libido will be stronger. Um, and you definitely, especially if you're in like a monogamous relationship, you're married, you've been in a long-term relationship, you'll be able to go faster um, than you would like, you know, normally if it was just some strange piece or something like that, you know? So it's just, it, it definitely is a lot better, you know? And again, I've mm -hmm. been on six months now, so I, I definitely say the phrases. And the cost is about the same, more or less? Like, how does it equate? Um, it's more. It's more because uh, there's two forms of it. Like, you can get the just plain creams tube, and that's cheaper. I think, a, you know, it's a good question, by the way. I think um, it's because I've only been, I've only had to buy it twice because it lasts like 10 weeks. But um, I think the tube is probably like 100 bucks, and that mm -hmm. lasts again 10 weeks at twice a day. It can go a little bit longer if you're only putting it on once a day. And then, the ones you want to get though are the what are called the toppy clickers because the toppy clickers you just twist it and you go mm -hmm. doop and it's just it's more smooth and even distribution and you never like over because when you're doing with the tube you might do too much or you might do too little but with the toppy click and i think the toppy click is probably like 145 bucks mm, okay it's all right um double the cost of like a bottle you know a 10 cc 200 milligram bottle all right cool let's 
let's schedule in another broadcast in the future, maybe in you know three or four weeks. We'll talk about that in a little more detail because I know that there's there's a deeper rabbit hole to go there, and there's a lot more conversation. We kind of wanted to focus on the getting ripped aspect. Sure. Uh, I've I've pinned the book in the description below and in the top comment. It's also been in the live chat if you guys want to grab a copy. Uh, you also gave me a a link for uh, I'm just scrolling down here, Ultimate Fat Loss Bundle. What was that? Yep. So great question. So it is obviously guaranteed shredded in there. Mm-hmm. And then a copy of the book, The Metabolic Blowtorch Diet, which by the way, if you've never- oh, it's a full bundle. Yep. If you've never fasted in your life, read that before you read Guaranteed Shredded because Guaranteed Shredded is super advanced and it's advancing the metabolic blowtorch lifestyle. So read that f- first. Um, it's also an awesome, awesome webinar that I did with Dennis Mangan, mm-hmm. which you guys all know from Rogue Health and Fitness, PD Mangan, a good friend of mine. Um, I did that in September of last year, and it's literally a two-hour webinar on how to optimize intermittent fasting. And I'm telling you, there are so many tips, hacks, and tricks, and insider stuff in there. It's amazing. And then there's also a PDF that came with that webinar, um, which is essentially like all of the things that we said, like you know, summarized, like a Cliff Notes version. And then the last thing, which is kick-ass, is the um the nutrient calculator or what do we call it? i forget what it's called but it's a converter it's the nutrition converter the caloric converter so when you start this diet you just literally program you know plug in your net your your weight your height and what body type you are so if you're either endo meso or ecto and it calculates all of your macro and micros on a daily basis exactly for you so you don't have to do any of the work which is that, you know that costs a lot of money that software dork overseas built that for me so um you get all those things with it all right, and I'm going to put your YouTube channel uh, in here. It's it's got some interesting conversations. I'm subscribed to it. Uh, it's called the TOT Revolution. Um, give it a sub if um, you know you're a dude and you want to optimize yourself. Um, you know whether it's talking about testosterone or or the intricate details of uh, managing those endocrine systems as you age. Uh, you get into some really gnarly deep talks. Like we're just kind of scratch, you know, scratching the tip of the iceberg here. Like there's a lot more conversation that goes on your channel and you host doctors and all kinds of, you know, clinical professionals where this is really their full wheelhouse. I mean, you've been doing this for a while. Like you really know your shit, which is why I brought you on here. Thanks, man. Well, I watched, I mean, the reason we I connected with you because I know we both, both are busy guys is I watched yours the other day too that you did in, in November and I was like, God damn, dude guy's a master now so i was like i reached out and was like rich we gotta we gotta talk because there's some more stuff that you can add but you do a great job too man and again like i, like I said i'm always privileged to be on your show so i appreciate it thanks dude appreciate it um we'll schedule it in soon links are again they're in the chat they're pinned in the description below if you want to grab any of that stuff uh jay i'll catch up with you in a few weeks thanks for hopping on brother awesome man you have a great day all right peace